I am now very happy to introduce um, the Executive Director of the Asia Europe Foundation, Mr. Toru Murakawa, for his opening remarks. Mr. Murakawa is a seasoned Japanese diplomat with experience across several continents dealing with culture, media, and regional economic cooperation. Prior to leading ASEF, his last posting was as Minister, Deputy Head of Mission for the Embassy of Japan in Iran. Mr. Murakawa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning from the Asia Europe Foundation in Singapore and a warm welcome to all speakers and participants to the World Access to Higher Education Day, WAHED, Asia Conference. On behalf of ASEF, I would like to congratulate the National Education Opportunities Network, NEW, and its founder, Dr. Graham Asaton, for bringing, bringing us all together today. After the successful kickstart of the conference, we lay in Australia Asia, we are now second in line with the Asia event. In about three hours, we will hand over the virtual relay button to our colleagues in Europe. The Asia Europe Foundation is proud to be part of the Bahad Initiative, where organizations across continents promote equitable access, success, and quality in higher education. Together, we form a strong network of like-minded institutions in a joint endeavor towards the UN 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goal 4 to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. ASEF is the only permanent institution in the Asia-Europe meeting or ASEAN process. The importance of access to quality in education as a, as a basic human right and a tool for responsible citizenship, economic prosperity, and the resilience of society is clearly stated in the outcome document of the past ASEM summit. But how this critical commitment translated in national equity policy or regional frameworks in Asia and Europe? One parameter is the number of countries which has a national policy on equity in higher education. According to the worldwide study by NEON and Lumina Foundation on the occasion of the first WAHED in 2018, among the 71 countries surveyed, only 11% had national policies on equity in higher education. In 2020, with the assistance by ASEF, NEON reviewed the data for Asia and Europe. While it is promising to see that now about one third of the respondents have standalone policy documents that promote equity in higher education, there is still a large room for more efforts. During today's online conference, our focus is on access and success for marginalized groups in Asian higher education. We will hear perspectives from policymakers, academics, and students from various parts of Asia on the subject. Together with our steering committee members of the event, we have prepared three parallel running thematic sessions for exchange and discussion. And we invite you to share with us good examples at the policy level and in practice, as well as challenges to meet the need of the marginalized students, namely, first, women students and students from lower socioeconomic, rural and refugee backgrounds. Second, non-traditional students and third, students with special needs. 
this is satisfied. Access to higher education can only be the starting point. An engaged participation of all students during their higher education pathways has to be ensured. Access without a reasonable chance of success is an empty phrase as stated in a policy brief by our partner organization, the International Association of Universities. Said that, we have to be prepared that the meaning of equity, access, or success will differ across countries. However, it is necessary to enhance these ideas in each and every country by discussing and allocating as much as possible. From ASEF's side, our upcoming eighth ASEF regional conference on higher education will explore how universities and students can foster inclusion and diversity in the final decade for the 2030 agenda and will raise awareness on potential risks and opportunities in a post-COVID world. The discussions and output of today's wide conference will certainly feed into the preparations of our project. Last but not least, our heartfelt thanks to our steering committee members who will be with us through the sessions. Professor Dr. Chanita Lukpol Nguan from Sham University in Thailand. Ms. Sincia Chan from the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Dr. Edison Farman from the National Teachers College in the Philippines. And Mr. Anthony Gartner, La Trobe University in Australia. I would also like to thank Her Excellency Ms. Kara Owen, ASEF Governor and British High Commissioner to Singapore for being with us today. I wish all participants and our online audience an insightful conference and inspiring exchanges. <laughs>